probably 50 to 75 percent of our patients are overweight to obese. Uh, now, we do see some patients that come in that are very thin, very small, and yet they have very aggressive cancer. That tends to be a type of cancer that is not hormonal in nature. So if a woman comes in and she's 42 and she's not overweight, never has been overweight, and she has cancer, like right now we have a 33-year-old mother of four with metastatic breast cancer, wonderful lady, and she's thin, has always been thin. If you said, Dr. Goodyear, tell me, is she going to be estrogen progesterone positive or negative? I'd tell you, most likely negative. And in fact, that's what she is. That's not what she is, but that's her cancer type. But what's really interesting is she has other hormones that are high. Growth hormone, prolactin. Mm -hmm. So it's not just estrogen and progesterone, okay? But when a person's thin and they have breast cancer or prostate cancer or cancer in general, they tend to be less hormonal and more aggressive. And when they're overweight, they tend to be more hormonal and slower. Okay. So the cancer would, would sometimes be, sorry, I keep losing my mic. So the cancer, so it's possible that the cancer is less aggressive because it's hormonal. Yes, it's, and it gives you more means to disrupt it. Doesn't mean it's not going to be aggressive. Just like I mentioned those two yes, ladies yes, yes. that had metastatic breast cancer to bone. Yeah. They, they had a hormonal positive cancer. Yeah. But we were able to use that in part with other things, natural, to really change uh, and, and eliminate the cancer. Yeah. Okay. Earlier you said that doctors should be testing hormones, that you test hormones as soon as you see a cancer patient, and that from that hormonal test results, you get, um, you get an indication of which direction to go in. My, my question is, if doctors were to test hormones, what should they look at? And the second part of that question is, because I had a long discussion with you before we started filming, about the testing that I did through you, uh, where you get an extensive hormonal uh, result or hormonal reading, do doctors today have access to that? Or is that something specific to functional medicine, to alternative doctors? Because you were, test you were looking at estradiol, estron, uh, estriol. Are these things in the dictionary of modern medicine today? <laughs> Absolutely, because all of this is born out of actually the science. It's all there. Now, the problem is doctors as, as a whole don't tend to read a lot, and that may surprise a lot of people. Yes. There was actually a, a study done here uh, back in the U.S. back in 2001. They actually looked and said, where are doctors reading, and where's the published evidence? They actually found that doctors were about 17 years behind the current published evidence. The point and take home from that is that doctors aren't doing a good job of staying up on the evidence. Yeah. So as it relates to hormones and hormone metabolites, it's right there in the science, right there. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, they don't have to go looking, you know, outside of that. Should doctors be doing this? Absolutely. Is this just confined to integrative or functional medicine? It shouldn't be. But for some reason it is, it is, but it shouldn't be because it's scientific. It's the right thing for the person, the patient. Um, and it's not new. I mean, when you look at, you know, you talked about estrone, estradiol, and estriol. Those are three estrogens. Most oncologists will only look at estradiol, maybe estrone if they're lucky. They're not going to look at any of the other metabolites that you and I looked at and talked about the two hydroxyestrone estradiol, the four hydroxyestrone estradiol, the ratios, the methoxies, which are the metabolites that uh, body methylates to turn off these metabolites. We briefly talked about the environmental toxins, BPA, uh, for you that actually can be estrogenic. Uh, so these, they may have nothing to do with hormones, but they may be environmental toxins that are astro actually estrogenic. So, you know, this is, not just confined to integrated medicine, but it should be for all doctors. A lot of it's just they don't read or, or maybe they just don't know. Yeah. 
Okay. But it should be available to all patients. Yes, absolutely. Yes, definitely. And in a patient with cancer, Leah, they should do a broad assessment to begin with. Now, if somebody comes in and they don't have cancer and they just want to get a better handle where their hormones are, you may not have to do as broad of an initial assessment. But in somebody with cancer, I cannot leave any door unopened. Hmm. I have to see it all. Hmm. So a few questions. The first question is why urine? Because you, uh, the test that I did that you had recommended I do that, that gives you the, all the hormone indications um, was a urine test and you collect urine over uh, different times in the day at different times in your cycle at a, sorry, at a specific time in the cycle if you're a menstruating woman. Can you just explain that to us uh, a bit of why are we testing urine? Why is the hormone level in the urine uh, w that is tested? And why specifically in that um, luteal phase or, or menstrual phases? 